Hey everyone, today I'm in California going to check out the abandoned Donner Pass Railroad Tunnels. But along the way, I just passed a train on the highway. It should be here any minute. I didn't even know there was going to be a tunnel. I was just expecting to get it going by. But then I realized this tunnel's here. It's not a very long one. So we're definitely not going to race it to the other side. But I think this is going to be a pretty nice sight to see a Union Pacific train. I haven't filmed many of those. Take a look at all the water coming out of this tunnel. This whole place is so dry in a severe drought. Most of the surrounding area is on fire. But yet this little bit of water you're seeing here trickling out of this tunnel... It's keeping everything right here green along it. Everything else is pretty much dead. The train's coming. I can hear the tracks making noises. Yep, I hear it. High pitched screeching sound going through the tracks. Oh, there's the train. We see it. That's why it took so long. It's having a lot of trouble pulling the load up this steep hill. That's not a really long train, especially by the standards in the United States. That was a lot of scrap metal. All right, that was an awesome catch. Now we have about another 90 minute ride before we actually get to the abandoned Donner Tunnels. 
On my way back up to the main road, I came across this old paved road. Maybe this was the old road. A lot of times they abandon the old road when they build the new one. It's just easier to abandon it here because the old ones weren't efficient. They were narrow, very squiggly, not a lot of excavation done to make them. Look what I found on the way up. That's cool. I'm gonna start collecting that. It was just in the bushes. It wasn't even near the railroad tracks, surprisingly. Bridge said Western Pacific 1928. Alright everyone, we just made it to the road where the Donner Tunnels are. What you see down here that we're about to go on to is the old railroad grade. And you can see the active tracks that used to switch onto this. We've got a pretty steep hill here leading down. Oh wow, that's actually kind of cool. If I spin around here, you can actually see the old railway blockade and a couple of the snow sheds it looks like. So this right here is the railroad line that would have gone into the tunnel that's now abandoned. It was abandoned in 1996. And there's even more of it here. So maybe we'll check this stuff out first. It feels so soft. I'm driving over a lot of mulch. It looks like this one's completely blocked off. They got the doors shut. And look, there's the active one still. We're not going to drive down here any further. You can see the lights are red on the signal towers. Let's briefly stop here and look inside the snow shed. Unless something says otherwise. All right, probably not the place to be exploring, but we're just gonna take a quick peek. This thing right here is a administration building, it says, but they probably don't use it much. Look at all the graffiti in here. Looks like they parked some of their equipment in here. So this is just being used as storage. It's definitely not fully abandoned. Let's walk down to the fully abandoned stuff. All right, here we are pulling away. What I'm driving on now is all mulch. It actually feels really bouncy and soft. Got a nice cushion to it, unlike running over gravel. So that right there, where that big rock is, is the end of the line. Hasn't been used since 1996. Now, we're gonna be driving down the old railroad grade. And there's the new railroad grade to the right. Where we're driving right now is exactly where the trains used to go for well over 100 years. These railroad tunnels were all built in the 1860s. bad ride. Not the smoothest, but at least there's no potholes, so we can actually drive pretty fast on this. In about one mile, we'll come up to a parking area where we can go inside the tunnels and the abandoned snow sheds. Probably got a couple of miles of hiking once we get there. Through all the exciting stuff, you don't even have to walk far to find it.
this road got really big gravel. A lot of it is probably the old ballast. I just stopped right here at this old, looks like an electrical shack. That's exactly what it is. Look inside, everything's been stolen. And there's a bird's nest. Let's step in here for a moment. Anyone in there? No eggs. Yeah, it looks like everything's gone. So I'm guessing this was a small signal building. I don't think it was anything like an actual switchman's shack or anything. Just look at that stuff here. It may have been. If anyone knows exactly, leave in the comments. Here's another one of these little signal shacks. You can see in the drainage ditch, there was an electrical PVC pipe leaving it. That one's about the same. It looks like they tried to board it up at one point, but somebody broke it off. So now we're coming into the parking lot area and we should be able to actually see the tunnel underneath the roadways bridge when we get there. Looks like they have a firewood cutting operation here and all the junk is what gets chipped. We also could have drove in here. I just thought it was more exciting going down the grade. So right through here is a parking area for the railroad tunnel. Thankfully it's a Friday. There aren't that many people here. That's really cool how this trimmer is painted up. All patriotic. Alright, so that bridge right there on the roadway is intended for the train. We'll be able to see the tunnel as soon as we walk through there. Alright everyone, so here we are. We're gonna walk underneath this gate. And we're walking exactly where the trains used to travel. When this originally opened, it was for wagon trains. It's a little bit muddy here. It's kind of cool for such a dry place. Railroad tunnels always seem to collect water since they're so deep in the ground. This is going to be pretty awesome. I can see lots of falling rocks must happen in here. It's not even a deep tunnel either. Alrighty everyone, we're going in. Whole ton of graffiti in here. Definitely would be a place where you need a flashlight because once we get into the middle of this, I don't think you're gonna be able to see the floor and there are a lot of tripping hazards in here. There's an abundance of rocks all over the floor. And it actually seems like it's drying up. The floor suddenly is dry in here. There probably is still water. It's just trickling below all the ballast. I'm thinking they may have done some work in here. It definitely looks like it's a lot smoother as we start to get further through the tunnel. Definitely a lot easier for walking. There's only a couple large boulders that fell. Most of these boulders likely fall in the winter time. I've seen other people's videos of this place and in the winter it looks like a skating rink. There's so much ice. I definitely want to check that out sometime if I'm in the area at the right time. 
and there being so much ice, it means in the winter there's a lot of freezing and thawing going on, prying the rocks apart, making it for a pretty dangerous hazard. It looks like we're maybe a third through the tunnel, maybe not quite. I always love burping in tunnels. It always leaves such an awesome echo. Just and look at the amount of graffiti. Imagine if this tunnel was concrete, how bad it would be. A lot of people seem to avoid stone tunnels because they're not as good of a canvas. All right, we're looking back where we just came from. Now we're about two thirds of the way through the tunnel. Looks really nice walking through it and looking back. And we're almost out. You can't see it with all that overexposure, but there is another snow shed. Now you can see it. As Soon as we get out of the tunnel, we're gonna be walking right into a snow shed. I stand corrected. That is not the snow shed yet. It's another tunnel before we come upon the snow shed. And the end of the tunnel we're in now actually does have concrete. The mountain mustn't have been stable enough to be open like the other end. Wow, this is a really awesome view. I love that so much. All right, we have an awesome view coming out of the tunnel. And then we have another really short tunnel here. That's the roadway we drove in on. We could even see this when we came in. About to enter another really small tunnel. And what is that? wreckage over there on the edge of the roadway. See that down there? What do you guys think that is? There's not much left of it. It looks like a place we probably wouldn't be able to get down easily. We got an old railroad culvert pipe here. Let's look at all the erosion around it from what's spilling, splashing around. They gotta add some gravel under that if they want this trail to survive in the long term. Or put concrete like the entrance. That's a great idea. Let's go see what condition this is in. Not bad shape at all. Not a hole in it. Looks like a little bit of damage on the end. But this thing will still be good probably for multiple decades. It's not raining as much here as it used to. Here's another culvert pipe, much smaller. And here we are entering another tunnel. It's got a lot of stabilizing bars on it. They look like they've been hit or twisted before. You see the one that we just came out of? That one's got a lot of I-beams holding it up. Going inside. You see, as I mentioned before, when you have a flat tunnel, people are always gonna put more graffiti on it. I know any tunnel I've ever gone to like this, every time you come year to year, you can never find the same graffiti again. People will come in with rollers, white it out just to have a new canvas. So this looks like this might actually technically be a snow shed since it's not actually a tunnel. It looks like there used to be a ladder going up here onto this platform. Get out of the way of the train. Yeah, take a look at that platform. The ladder's missing. There is still a ladder right here though. Goes up. Maybe that used to be a light socket. Signal maybe. All right, everyone, we just came out of that tunnel and I'm currently standing on top of an old railroad underpass. 
lot of rocks that fell into the road since this was last used. But it's definitely being used as a trail. Maybe those rocks were put there intentionally so people wouldn't go through it. Let's go to the other side where it's got a few wooden timbers missing. You can definitely see how this road used to go along. All right, now we're coming up upon a part called the China Wall and into another tunnel, which I cannot yet see the end. I'm pretty sure it goes around a corner. Look at these pipes. Somehow that got torn up. They're electrical tubing. The road down there looks amazing. Doing those twists, multiple switchbacks, makes its way up onto that bridge. Got more of that electrical tubing going inside the tunnel. I see someone in there with a flashlight, but I can't see the end. These are always the most exciting tunnels to go in when you don't know exactly how far you gotta go. I see a big pile of old railroad ties thrown up over there. I'm glad I chose a nice cool day to do this. Today's high is only about 46, and it's perfect weather to be going on a hike when you're gonna be working up a sweat. This is fantastic in here. Now here we go into a tunnel that's just rock. I can already see like little windows. So that is definitely a snow shed further up. This is also Alright, so we just made it into the actual mountain. That beginning part was just a snow shed and to sure up the mountain so avalanches could just go over the top of it. So the tunnel is actually relatively short. I already see some more windows up here in the snow shed. But the snow shed, I think, goes much further much darker snow shed than the one I went in a while back in Stevens Pass, which was all open on the side. This one's completely enclosed. All right, coming out of the tunnel into a snow shed. That's not supposed to be like that. Definitely a hole got smashed in here somehow. Probably by a giant rock falling on it, I would assume. It's actually getting a little chilly in here, I like it. Looks like a little bit more damage up there. Rebar sticking out. Looks like a whole door here we can look out. All right, this is a pretty exciting spot. Still can't see the end yet, but here's a door we can look out. You can see up here there's a metal door that's supposed to be able to unravel and come down here. So if I jump on up, take a look outside, 
This is pretty awesome. Take a look at all those railroad ties that are thrown out here and burnt. I wonder if they're burnt from a forest fire or not, or intentionally set by the railroad company. Take a look at how far this goes, what we're going to be walking down. That's got to be at least a half a mile where it leads right through the mountain again. Completely encased in case of an avalanche. Look at this. Got a whole bunch of modern concrete railroad ties. Also a good amount of them sitting over there alongside that wall. Coming up to a second door. Still got a lot of ways to go. Beautiful view. Right here I can see where the prefabricated concrete is pulling apart a little bit. Until I saw that, I didn't even realize a lot of this is all prefabricated. Some of the spray paint in here is so fresh, you can smell it really strongly. So it looks like a lot of this stuff we're seeing right now is prefabricated, brought in from somewhere else. So that tells me that this stuff is definitely not from the 1800s. Maybe sections of the interior wall are. Or maybe you see this wood. Maybe the original stuff was made out of wood. It oftentimes was. All right, everyone, this area is pretty cool. We have a lot more vent holes. Amazing. And I'm noticing this other side has them too and they blocked them all with sheet metal. I guess everything they ordered was prefabricated and they didn't need the holes on this side. Bunch of them up there, you can see are kind of boarded up. Check this out, I can't fit through this hole but I'm gonna put the camera through here. I want you to see, see how the cables that are sticking out of the wall? That's how they were able to lift this with cranes into place when they were building it. Looks like someone's having a campfire way down there. Right here we came across a part with a really nice stone wall. This part of the tunnel smells really musty. Kind of smells like wet dog. Take a look at this. This is so cool. Doesn't it look like there's a lot of light in there? It's because it's shining through the culvert underneath the floor. This is a culvert pipe here. Let me stick you down and show you. Oh, wow. We can even walk inside this. Very musty. Yep. Culvert leading right outside and off the mountain. This is really cool. Let me step in here a little bit. Can actually get inside here. Gotta watch out for that rock. That looks like it's not safe. Wow, there's literally a tunnel I could crawl through here. How far does that go? It's way too tight for me to fit up there. I can only come in the little bit at the end. If it was life or death, I could probably eventually shimmy through that. This rock does not look safe. All right, coming back out. So that was probably just a natural stream the builders of this came across. So that's why they made that tunnel going all the way up. It actually really stinks in here like wet dog. It really does. All right, everyone, we have just entered where it enters the mountain as I was showing when I was looking out that door. So now this is technically a tunnel, but it only seems to last about 100 feet before it enters another snow shed and then we're right outside again. Woo! Not the best echo in here. 
I'm thinking maybe on the way back we might try to walk on top of this just so we can see how it is up there. How many rocks have probably fallen onto it. Here's another door. We're going out, but it looks like we might be going right back in. This door is actually intact. Got a bunch of bullet holes through it. It looks like they used heavy machinery to just throw the rocks through the door. All right, here we go. Coming on out and right back in. It looks like the snow sh it looks like the snow shed may have actually been here and it just got destroyed. So no, what we just walked through was a little tiny bonus tunnel. This is the big tunnel that we're about to enter. Yeah, look, this was part of the snow shed. See the bolts? They all got bent sideways. Pieces of it everywhere. Look at all the rocks. It looks like a rock slide smashed through it. Yep, definitely. And there is also a good way here to get up onto the roof. If we choose that way on the way back. I'm amazed how strong these pieces are. The majority of them look like they survived the ride without even breaking in half, while a few of them just completely, they just dissolved. And I see all the rebar sticking out everywhere. So this is a really cool tunnel. All right, looks like we're about to go right back in. All right, everyone, we just came to the end of the snow shed. Entering the tunnel, and this is definitely not as big of a tunnel as the first one we went through near the parking lot. This one looked like it was going to be big the way it goes into the mountain, but that does not appear to be true. I love how it goes around a corner. And you see right here. The little spaces for workers to get off to the side if the train was to come when they were in here. Here's another one. And we're right back out into the sun. It's actually a good thing. I always love cold weather like this, but my fingers are starting to get really cold. And I see up there in the distance, another snow shed's coming up. All right, everyone, we just made it out of the tunnel. And that was not a long one at all. It looks like since it closed, this railroad, a lot of erosion damage has took place here. Yep, there's a culvert down there. A lot of erosion, railroad ties, even a foundation from a light post or something all got sucked over to the pipe. Looks like a large washout here on the other side of the culvert. I even see some wires sticking out of the ground here. I don't even see the end of the culvert, unless that's it right here. Look at that. All that stone, everything from the washout you can see down there in the tree line. That culvert pipe is definitely buried. I don't see it anywhere. I do see it probably came out right there. You see how they put a bunch of nice stones in there like steps to help with the erosion. This is just going to get worse every time it rains. All right, everyone. I just looked on the map a little more. This tunnel looks like it's going to be a really long one. And when we come out the other side, it looks like there's really not that much more exciting stuff to see before it eventually makes its way back to where the now current railroad tunnel comes out. 
This is pretty dangerous, especially if it was really rainy or during the spring thaw. Wouldn't want to stand next to this hill. Because that's just a bunch of boulders stuck in sand. Look at this culvert pipe. I wonder how big that thing is. It's definitely got a lot of its capacity blocked by all the rocks tumbling down here. And as the trees start to die off even more and more from the drought and probably a fire, most of California I've been seeing, probably more forest than not is burnt. And it doesn't seem to survive it that well. It looks like, especially because there's a drought, the trees, they're just not going to grow back unless it starts getting rainy again. But that being said, most of the trees are very, very drought tolerant. I'm not used to seeing that. Despite no rain, the majority of the trees are still doing well. I can see they're going into a survival stage where they start to produce less pine cones, less needles. But all it takes is a good year and the ones that survive, they'll bounce back real fast. What do you guys think this was for? What do you think they used this 90 degree angle piece of rail for? Did that have some sort of purpose? It's really small, definitely not anything modern. Because this railroad, it didn't shut down that long ago, so I imagine it would have the newer style rail, or it did. Hey, look at that big rock. That's going to be on its way down soon. Probably another culvert pipe right here. And then we're about to go into this next tunnel. It's got the little snow shed in front of it. So I know this area of California, they get some horrible snowstorms. Yeah, this culvert just looks like it's completely filled in with sand. It also seems like the rock slides also seem to be a problem. Like you saw that part of the snow shed completely smashed out of the way. Yeah, there's a lot of cliff right there. Not many trees to hold together snow, which results in the avalanches. Yeah, just take a look at what we just walked through. That is fantastic. That snow shed from this tunnel goes continuously all the way along the mountain, except for the broken part. All right, everyone, we're about to enter this tunnel. Extremely dark in here. Going into a nice reinforced concrete section, it looks like. The end is not in sight. That's just a reflection you're seeing. Very smooth in here. This is so cool. As far as I can see at the moment, it's all reinforced. Wow, that looks so cool. Yeah, you can kind of see the half and half cutoff of where the sunlight is getting in here. It looks like we got some iron oxidizing bacteria over here on the wall. I like it. These tunnels are so nicely maintained. Any falling debris, for the most part, has been removed. Ooh. 
see a little bit of light. I guess this isn't going to be as scary as I thought. By looking at the satellite images, you can't see this part. It's all trees thick enough where you can't see anything until out the other side. Halloween is coming up soon. Yeah, there's a lot of trees growing on the outside of this. Let's look up in here. This is pretty cool. All right, everyone. On the screen right now, I'm showing you a photo from Google Maps. This is the reason why I thought this was going to be a really long tunnel. As you can see, maybe it was a cloud, the shadow of the mountain, whatever it might be, thick trees. It looks like a tunnel to me. I'm right in the center of it at the moment, and for whatever reason, you can't see it on the maps. Look at this. That's another culvert pipe. And that needs to be dug out. That's really filled in too. Big storm, it'll flood this place. Probably not a big deal. It'll find ways out. Wow, look at the view. I can actually fit through this gap. Yeah, there's not many trees growing here. So I would assume it's just the shadow of the mountain. The day they took the satellite images. I'm also going to show you another picture right here. You can see where I am, and you can see the railroad continues up around this curve, around this curve, and eventually it just, it just goes right into the new track. You can see this was the old route. You can see where the new train tunnel is. It's called Big Hole. Look at that. Is that telegraph? Yep. Look at these old insulators. The old telegraph communications going through here. Yet again, we have another tunnel. It's brief, but it's another tunnel. This is awesome. I'm thinking if it's feasible, I might just walk over the top of all this on the way back. I gotta check out how bad the terrain is first. Very musty here. Feels like there's dust in the air. Woo! Woo! Pretty good echo here, because it's mostly a sandy floor. Anytime there's deep ballast, it helps absorb the sound, so you don't really get a good echo out of it. All right, this looks like the end of the line, and our adventure is going to continue up on top. That looks really cool, the entrance of the tunnel back inside the snow shed. Good about, there is actually a good amount of erosion there, showing the rebar inside the structure. Yeah, it shouldn't be that bad at all to get up over the top of some of these small tunnels. They don't look like they're in there very deep. That wasn't that hard to get up on top of here. All right, we made it up on top of the structure. 
which is really awesome. You can see how they lifted it into place, but over the years, they become so brittle, they just snap off now. That's what years of rusting has done. Over here is the tunnel portal. Yeah, there definitely is a trail going up here. Let's see if we can take it. I want to watch out for things like that. That hole right there was probably smashed when this rock here fell down off the mountain. And we're probably going to see worse damage than that. Like right here. This looks like it wasn't part of the shed, but I do see mangled rebar. Something got smashed. It looks like maybe that wall there. So now it's going to be a bit of a hike up and over this tunnel. Alrighty. That was not the easiest climb. A lot of these places do not have good footholds. And the ground is crumbling. Can't really grab onto any of the smaller rocks. They just fall out of place. It looks like I'm getting someone else mixed into my radio frequency. All right, we're getting really high up on this mountain now. And right here is a bunch of wooden timbers good amount of nails sticking up. I don't know what this might have been, but that wasn't a very big tunnel, so we should be seeing it pretty soon. The other part of the snow shed, who knows? It might be a massive cliff leading down to it. If that's the case, I'm just gonna have to walk up on the other section that I know is continuous without tunnels. What do you think? Maybe this was somebody's shack. Because there's a bunch of metal corrugated roofing mixed in with the bunch. Whatever it is. Definitely has been a while since that got taken out. This is really steep here around the edge of this mountain. I'm hoping to figure out. There it is. I finally see the top of it. We're going to try to get there. This is kind of sad. The trees right here, they're all dying just as a result of the drought. Nothing to do with wildfires in this spot. In a place like this, there's limited soil in the mountain and it dries out pretty quickly. All right, the dangerous part's over. And by the looks of it, a lot of the graffiti artists don't come out here. It's pristine, I don't see any graffiti on the outer wall or here, neither. Very pristine. I really wanted to come up here because I wanted to see all the rocks that have fallen down onto the structure. And we can also look at the big holes I was showing from the inside up top. Look at this. Look at all this sand during a rainstorm that eroded down here. You see the railroad company drilled these and tried to prevent them from falling. But as that stuff ages and starts rusting, it'll eventually happen. I'm not afraid being up here at the moment because the only spots I've seen holes, there was obviously a massive rock that smashed through it. And this whole platform, it takes avalanches every year. Look at the size of these rocks. This is really cool how they snugged it right up against the cliff and filled it in with concrete. Right here's a bit of a drop. I don't know if this was by design or not, but it being slanted in, 
doesn't really seem like the best idea. And by the evidence of the sand here, you can see why a bit of water pools there, which can easily be absorbed, then freezing, cracks it open, exposing water to the rebar, where eventually it starts rusting. Then you get failure. Look at this. A giant rock must have smashed through this. This is probably one of the lights we saw from the inside. Maybe. Nope. We definitely didn't see that. I don't see a good way to go down there either. It smashed through here, but it did not smash through into the snow shed. Take a look at all that creosote covered timbers. I'm thinking that was either just to support the concrete during construction, or maybe that is the original snow shed. Like I said, they wouldn't have built it like this in the 1800s. It probably didn't even have this in the 1800s. About my comment earlier, probably a lot of graffiti artists also want their stuff to be seen, which makes sense why it's not on the roof, but it doesn't make sense why it's not over here on the edge. It would create a nice ugly view for all these houses in the highway. Because you can see this thing very clearly from a distance. You can see it over here on the edges where the water dribbles over. It's starting to cause damage, showing a bit of that rebar. And you see, like I was mentioning, the whole thing is tilted inwards, which doesn't make sense. That's why all this sand is building up, because that's where water collects. And you see every little spot where it dribbles out, got a good amount of erosion. But if you think about it, that erosion's really not that bad. This place closed in 1996, meaning it was probably here well before then. Got a bunch of nails here. Got a bunch of big rocks here that look pretty recent. Because if they're not recent, they quickly start growing stuff on them and getting dirty. But you see these, you can tell that was pretty recent. You see how they get dirty with all this stuff growing on it. Yep. I'm not exactly sure what that black stuff's called, so if somebody knows, leave in the comments. I'm kind of curious. If it, is it some kind of moss, algae, or lichen, something like that? Look over here where these timbers are blocking this off. This is probably one of those spots where I showed the culvert, like that thing I walked inside where I showed it goes up the mountain. Probably something similar to that. Somebody had a campfire. Look at all these timbers. Wow, that's nice. Look at this. Bright yellow. It's like fluorescent. From a, in, a, in the distance, I thought those might have actually been new. They're in such good shape. And we got a little bit of graffiti up here on the next tunnel portal that I'm hoping we can get around. But if we can't get around it, I'm hoping at least we can find a way down and then we can just crawl through one of the vents. Now this area has a good proper slant Yep, see? No deterioration to the edge, just because it's slanted. And we saw a squirrel. And some electrical work. Let's see if we have a good way to get down from here. Whoa. So right now, we're above the entrance of the tunnel. Yeah, this rock is not stable at all. I can see how water gets in there and pries it apart when it freezes. 
then it lets it go when it melts. All right, we just got to get there, and it looks like we can walk along it until we find a good way in. For a minute, I got concerned because I see the holes here are very narrow and they're high off the ground. So it would be impossible to get through them, but thankfully, I see one of those doors that rolls up. So when I'm out on these adventures, I always carry my CB radio here just in case because even though this thing doesn't have a super big antenna, probably somebody out there, one of these trucks or something, would hear a, distre a distress call just in case. This area, we actually have a great signal everywhere, so there's no concern as far as that. I also carry a walkie-talkie here, which is also capable of putting out a distress call. I know a walkie-talkie doesn't go very far. I'm having trouble with this. I usually put the CB radio on my belt. I just didn't put it away. This right here is so I can communicate with my partner out here. All right, another 100 feet or so. All righty, there's a pretty nice densely traveled trail coming out of there. What do you think that metal trough is for? All right, we're gonna go back inside the snow shed and we'll climb on the other one on the way back. All right, here's that tunnel where I just climbed back down to get back in here. It's a pretty long tunnel, so I wasn't gonna try walking around on top of the mountain. Too steep to do so. Yeah, that would have been pretty stupid even trying to find a way around because there is really no more snow shed on the end of this tunnel. All right. This tunnel I know is the longer one, so I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do this, but I'm walking up on top because I know it does have a really good snow shed. It's alright, this is not the one I planned on doing, but from the distance it doesn't look like there's much mountain to go over. This is very dangerous climbing up here. A couple of those rocks I attempted to grab moved. All right, I just chose the stupidest trail through all this brush and moving rocks. Look, a gradual walking trail and an ATV trail. Both were better options than what I did. All right, everyone, we made it up here. It's not a deep tunnel at all. There goes the ATV trail, and it looks like this is our trail to get back over on top of the snow shed. And this one, as you can see, a lot more graffiti. It's all about accessibility. That other one wasn't easily accessible. So that's where I plan to go on a long walk, starting at that break. But we're just going to try and get around that and continue. It got warm out fast. It's already in the 60s. When I started the hike, it was only 46. That is a great view. I'm hoping we can get around that next tunnel. Doesn't look very deep or treacherous. It's very dry and crunchy here. A little bit steep. Not that bad though. So here is that tunnel coming back out. Tunnels were definitely built first. So 
some of the stuff is so recent, the plywood molds haven't even rotted away. I wonder if these repairs are from the 90s. Probably. Things don't decay as fast out here, it being so dry. I doubt, they'd be, I doubt they would do any substantial repairs to this just for the hiking trail. Like right there, they'll just probably remove any bad parts. Take a look at how many railroad ties there are that they just threw out of here when they tore it up. All over the side of the hill. So, this stuff here was probably all original when they built the railroad. Everything here looks far too modern. Definitely built afterwards. All right, we are approaching the wrecked part of the snow shed. And here's a really good view of one of those doors from the outside, how it rolls up. I think most of the ones we were looking at actually rolled up on the inside instead. I don't know what it is. This whole area smells like wet dog or some rotting animal. All right, that should be pretty easy to get over there. Look at all the rocks sitting up top. Take a look at all these bolts just bent right off. All right, I safely made it over. Look at the size of some of these rocks sitting up on top of this. You can see one of them hit right here, making a hole. This section has much tougher anchors. Those aren't gonna rust off anytime soon. Here's another campfire. Looks like somebody slid that thing over. I don't see any rocks right here that would have hit it. Definitely a lot of activities going on up here. Take a look at the graffiti. Dense amount of it. All right, we're getting ready to go into the next tunnel. We're going to go over it. <clears throat> That's a nice cubby hole between those rocks. See a good amount of crumbling right here. More railroad ties. Way easier than I thought to get over this tunnel. This tunnel, there's like barely any rock over it. Got a big fire pit right here. And it looks like pretty interesting drainage system too. So it looks like all the rainfall, snow melting here, was supposed to come down here and get stuck behind this dam. The dam also is probably to concentrate it. Then it comes down here and it looks like when it rains it still works without a problem. Sends it right over and off. That is definitely still operating right off the side. This is actually a pretty awesome place for a fire pit.
Got a big crevice down here. That actually really scared me at first because it felt so hollow. This big sheet's about to just flake off the top. All right. On to the next section. And take a look at that frog with tadpoles. What do we got off the side? Pretty steep. I see a bunch of chipmunks and other ground squirrels. Take a look at these massive boulders. I wouldn't be surprised if some of those things weigh a good three, maybe five tons. And look at all the timbers right here. Now these are much bigger. These ones are not railroad ties. These may have been parts of a possibly early snow shed before the concrete was put in. I can see this old wall. They definitely wouldn't have done that when they were working with all the concrete. There is a good amount of some old structure all broken here. A lot more big timbers. Stepping back down onto another section. That's one big piece of rebar. There's so much more old wood back behind this wall. That wall's a good thing. It'll probably stop any big rolling boulders before it comes down here. Big avalanche would just jump over the top. Wow, what an incredible view. We can see so much right here in this direction. We can't even see how far it goes around that next bend. From up here, we got a beautiful view of the road and its many switchbacks. Amazing. And this rock up ahead looks massive. More damage here. The concrete sagging everywhere. Something probably hit this. Or it's just junk concrete and it's just dissolving with the rain. This section, I would say, the whole structure is just pulling away over the years. Slowly sliding off the mountain. Wow, look at the size of this rock. I can't believe that this structure didn't break under that force. It probably didn't fall from far. It probably just whoop. But if it came from up there, that's amazing. I just wanted to give you all a size comparison. That's one really big rock. Probably at least 10,000 pounds. It's the size of a car. And there's not even any stress cracks of where it hit. By the looks of it, it may have fell from right there. Which is amazing. It didn't break anything. Because I saw further back, rocks that are tiny compared to these punched holes through. Maybe they just used better concrete in this section. You can see this job was obviously done in phases. Definitely. Some sections, you got really solid anchors for the crane. Some places got really cheap cable ones that just break off. Right here. And it's different once again. Another big rock. Here's a bit more damage. And if we look over the edge, take a look at all that debris. Mixed with all those railroad ties, 
A lot of that might be the old wooden structure. Just threw it over the side. They don't do that anymore these days, but most states don't allow railroad companies to throw their old creosote covered timbers like that anymore because it has unknown effects on the environment and it does kill plants that are near it. So anything you see like that was probably done a while back, but not too long. Those laws haven't been in effect that long. We got some more damage. Another incredible rock. How did it even get there? Must have came down here with some speed and did a massive flip over the wall. All right. Just got to jump up here. I don't see any damage. I don't know how it flipped unless it went off this like a big ramp. I thought so. This just about sums it up. Definitely a snowshed, this timber is. You see, got the giant beams, got the really nice, it looks like 4 by 12 timbers going across the top. Yep, that's definitely a snowshed. This is the most intact part we've seen. Most of it's smashed and, and disassembled. So yes, before they built the concrete, it looks like this concrete was put in a long time ago and that wooden snowshed roof was on top of it. You see where the beams were? They just cut it right out of there. Didn't even unbolt it or anything. This is definitely the old snowshed, so it would have been a little bit taller unless they dug this out when they put the concrete in. Is this rock responsible for this damage? It's been a real far distance. Numerous fire pits everywhere. Alright, I might have to walk back a bit to find a way down. Because this is a tunnel. We're not going to be walking over the top. Here's a big crevice. Whoa. Much, big crevice, much bigger crevice than I thought. Yep. That leads right down into the tunnel. I can hear people walking down there. Here's another big opening that was smashed by rocks. All right, here's another spot that got broken. And that goes down really far again. Definitely not a way for us to get down. By any chance, am I getting lucky over here? I just need to find a way down. Then this part of the snow shed has numerous doors I can get in. But it looks like I might potentially have to walk all the way back. There's a hole smashed by a rock. And this is the entrance to the tunnel. It's not like the others. It doesn't actually have a portal. Those trees are so cool that they're knocked over, but still bright green. All right, taking a look at the situation for the first time. Very tempting. I don't know if I want to do this or not. Because if I slide here and I don't catch that, I'm going to get hurt. I wish I had climbing rope. I wish I knew I was going to be doing this. I could just put a loop around that, get down there, and lasso it back off. 
it's actually a much further walk back than I thought. There is no way to get down. So, yeah, it's going to be at least a three-quarter mile walk back, maybe a bit more. I can definitely get down when I reach the next tunnel. All right, we had to walk back quite a bit, and we finally came up to a tunnel. This should be our way down. Take a look at the forest over here. That's definitely not dying from a fire like I mentioned earlier. It's just the soil is extremely dry. But what really amazes me is, unlike the trees I have at home, I don't see any half-dead ones. They're either healthy looking or completely brown. Doesn't look like any in between. Because I know at home, the type of trees we have around New England, they show signs of dying, sometimes 10 years in advance. Even when it comes to a drought, it just starts deprioritizing lower branches for its survival. Prioritizing. I don't know why I said that last thing. I think it's amazing how California has some of the worst looking forests I've ever seen. It's just because it's so dry and a lot of it has been on fire at some point. But not too far away, Northern California, uh, next to Oregon, all of Oregon, most of Washington, has the most lush healthy looking forest I've ever seen in my life. I can't see it. It's far below the surface, but I hear water trickling underneath all these rocks. There's also a bunch of squirrels. Oh, there's one. No, that one's a chipmunk. So this is finally our way down where the next tunnel starts up. How far of a drop is that? Big old drop. Gotta go up and around. Alrighty. I don't see any ways back into here, but we're gonna start walking along the edge. Hopefully we come along one of those doors or a gap big enough to squeeze back in. I sure hope. This might not sound good on the microphone. So I'm not going to film most of it. I'm just going to walk along the edge like this, plowing through everything, and hopefully we'll find something before I get scratched up a little too much. Oh man, I wish these culverts would, were bigger. That would probably be my way in. Alright, I've been doing this for the past 200 feet or so, and it's really not that much fun at all. I'm hoping we find a way in soon. All right, I probably walked about 400 feet having to move all the trees out of my face and getting slapped by a few. Cliff right there is pretty bad, but now I actually got a pretty decent trail until we can find a way in, hopefully. All right, this is not going in my favor. I'm now getting forced back up against this because of the cliff. kind of sharp. I'm already got a bunch of little scratches on me. Oh good, we do not have to go back. Definitely. There's definitely some doors up here. Good. I thought I remembered wrong. I definitely remembered the distance wrong. I only had that one scary part where you saw me walking carefully on the ledge. Here there's not a far drop, but there are some good prickly plants waiting for me if I slip off of this. 
As I go along, I'm noticing all these wooden shims. They put all these wooden shims in the gap to make these walls straight. Then they put concrete in the rest of the crack. See these anchors? They're level with my face. I'm crouched the entire time. But I'm also doing that for balance. And it looks like I can finally move away from that thing and possibly get in. All right, I could probably fit through that if I really tried, but we got a good trail here going down to that door. Yeah, that trail didn't go that far, so I'm back up against this for another 200 feet, it looks like. Notice all the graffiti here has all been covered up. I guess someone who has this view from their house took it into their own hands or had someone do it. All right, the trail came back. Oh my gosh, what did I touch? It looks like a whole bunch of crushed bugs. It's all over my pants too. I gotta wash these pants anyways. And I'll wash my hands later too. It's all over my shirt. All right, that took a lot. We're finally going back in. Nice and cool in here. I worked up quite the sweat doing that. All right, we're in total darkness again. We're about to go into the first tunnel next to the parking lot. We're almost done. So this entire trip today, it took me about five hours to do it, but I do walk at a fast pace. All righty. We're done with that tunnel, the one we couldn't get by up on top, so I had to walk back. Now we're coming out of a snow shed, and then we're about to enter this thing here, which I don't even think we'd even call that a tunnel. Well, it's not a natural tunnel like the ones back here where it's actually bored through the mountain. I guess a man-made tunnel. And then after that in the distance, you can even see the first tunnel, which will lead us back to the parking lot. Wow, those are some of the biggest backpacks I've ever seen anyone carrying. A lot of gear, and it looks like a full mattress on those guys. What I keep describing as maybe a dead animal or smelling like wet dog, it may actually be people peeing in the tunnels, and it can't wash away so it builds up like a gross public bathroom. Finally, the last tunnel, the longest one. That glimmer of light is the parking lot. Woo! Wow, it's about 5 p.m. and parking lot's empty. Not many explorers staying out for the night. That's about it. I hope today's video was interesting, everyone. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Check it out, everyone. Here's a view from the roadway. First tunnel comes out into a tiny tunnel, into another tunnel, which ends up inside a snow shed that wraps around the mountain. And it comes out right here, out the other side. Here's a pretty good view of it. Everything we walked on earlier.
see the tunnels up there and the snow shed just briefly. I stopped right here because I think this is a perfect view to show you how big that snow shed really is. See it up there on the mountain? Just incredible in size. And that's only a portion of it that we're able to see here. Let's try to zoom in even more. That's what we were walking up and along earlier. Right here we might have a bonus culvert just for pulling over. It looks like a possible culvert. We might be able to quickly look inside. Wow, this really oily road surface. It's sticky. Provides a lot of traction. I felt it as soon as I started walking here. So yes, there is a culvert here. Not as big as I thought I'd see. Pretty small. There's another one right here. 